Whipping from Max Face. I'm here to show you how to get a passive house airtight. Um, we're at Plasterboard Stage here on one of the sites in Thurfield in Hertfordshire. It's a, this is a traditional build, uh, block and brick or block and block. We've got 175 mil cavity, 150 mil insulate, PIR board on the inside, and then they've got a 25 mil cavity. So I want to show you around externally and internally what you can do to get the place airtight. On the external, we painted the block work with a membrane that keeps the water moisture off the block. So it doesn't obviously absorb it, it keeps the U value good. It also stops air infiltrating through the build. You can see also all the external lights that have been sealed. You've got the, the cavity back that you can see on the outside here, which is all sealed in silicon. The VCL has all been pasted over it, so we've got a continuous barrier right around the door. If you come on the inside, you can also see, oh, again, it's the lintel. It's all been painted and sealed right the way around. Silicon underneath the threshold as well, so these doors don't leak. Um, one thing that we've, one thing that we've realised is with the DPM, the damp proof membrane that goes underneath the slab, when it comes up the wall, it actually leaks between the concrete and the actual DPM. So we use a tape that sticks to the DPM and then sticks to the wall. And this creates an airtight sort of seal. That's because you get air in the pockets of concrete under the slab that eventually come through and up. We felt quite a lot, so we've actually applied this thing called a, a Tescon, Tescon Varna tape. Um, another thing that we realized, just here, you get this here, which is the insulation around the perimeter. You'll notice there's a lot of bills now, I have this little bit of PIR, basically, against the slab. This has stopped the cold bridging detail. We also noticed air coming between the actual floor slab and the PIR board. So you will notice that we've also painted continuously around, applied the tape, and then put all this around the actual insulation. So now the perimeters will not leak air. The reason why it leaks between here is because the, VC, the DPM underneath is lapped and jointed, has holes in it. So this will leak. So it's important to seal the perimeter uh, well, right, where else can we go? Let's go into the air. Uh, it's the same old, really. You've got internal oh, yeah. service, oh, yeah. service penetrations, or whatever you want to yeah. call it. Yeah, internal service penetrations coming through here. We can see it all sealed up, things like this. You can see a lintel in here. Is it a box lintel? No, a steel. steel. Uh, a steel. This is all careful detailing around here, sealing, sealing. Again, cavity bat underneath, sealed, silicon, threshold, all sealed underneath here. Nothing coming through. So another area that needs a little bit of attention is when you're bringing ductwork through the floor to run your electrics, water, here we've got a kitchen island. So when the DPM underneath the floor slab is there, the best way that we've learned how to do this is to cut a square out of the DPM. And before the DPM goes in, we've painted the floor with a liquid membrane. So this area here will all be painted with a liquid DPM, and then you've got the plastic going up to it, and you cut a nice square out of it. So now you have to join the liquid DPM to the plastic, and then we use the Tuscan Varna tape to tape around this. And that is how you create a nice airtight area to stop this from leaking. This is internal pipe work, so nothing to worry about here. And that's a soil pipe. Um, you can obviously see we've used a passive purple, a VCL, a vapour control membrane that's applied. You can see it on the walls. 
this is painted continuously around the whole house. So all this is completely airtight. These blocks are permeable, so they do leak air. So again, we've got a continuous barrier right the way through the build. Right, one other thing that we failed to mention was the joist hangers. So these joist hangers are built actually into the wall. So what happens is the actual hanger gets bedded on this mortar joint here with two prongs that sit in it and the block work sits on top. And this is what you can see here. And then the actual posi joist or joist sits in this sort of channel here. It bears on here. Um, by doing that method, you've potentially got 600 centers between each one and two prongs that go in there. On this one run along here, we've got up to 28 holes. So 14 hang hangers, 28 holes. This is very difficult to seal because obviously the block works going up at the same time. So you've got to try and get around all the plates and everything else. The best advice that we can give is really for you to put a ledger. And what that is, is like a wooden ledger plate that goes along the perimeter of the wall. You fix that, like in this wall here, you've probably got 14 holes as opposed to 28. And what it does, I don't know if you can see this little diagram here. Let's draw it over here. This is the block work wall. Not very good, I know. We fixed a bit of wood to the wall, a couple of fixings, an EDPM or, or a, um, some sort of membrane behind it, silicon just to block this up. And the actual, then the actual joist hanger sits on the wood. And that's the joist hanger. And then the actual joist sits in this channel here. And this is the joist. That way it's easier to seal rather than actually putting the joist hanger in between the mortar joint there. So a nice little tip to, uh, to hopefully help you with the joist hangers. It's probably, so it's probably worth, in this area, because we've got a vaulted ceiling, because we painted, how do I explain it? Hey, come in here. We, uh, again, we painted the block work walls. We then applied a sterling or OSB board on the ceiling. We have. So here we've got blowing insulation between the rafters to create a nice airtight barrier, so that's quite nice and tight. On top, we've got about 100, 150 mil of PIR. Here, to create the airtight barrier, we then lined the whole roof with the OSB board. So the liquid membrane goes all the way up, it covers the wooden wall plate, the OSB board, so all this whole roof is completely sealed. So to stop penetrating the ceiling to run the electric water, and as you can see up here, this is the MBHR system. You've had to put a uh, baton and then you run the electrics between the battles. So this, when you get plasterboard, the plasterboard goes across here and it covers all the electrics and all the ductwork so you can't see nothing. Um, this also is another little tip. When you, when you apply the baton, you're screwing straight into your primary air barrier which is in the roof. So then as you can see, each screw hole will have a lump of silicon. So as it drives the screw, compresses the wood to the OSB board, it creates an air seal. So you can see all this has been meticulously uh, stuck and fixed to the ceiling. You can also see where we've got the cable coming through for the light in here. Okay, another little tip here. We've obviously got soil pipes, that's a weak, a weak point. This one here, before the spray foam got put in between the uh, rafters, we actually put a length of soil pipe and left the actual end hanging out on the wall. Then we actually put the sterling board around it and then sealed up the sterling board. So above it, you've got a full seal of closed cell expandable foam, then the OSB board, and then you've got the actual uh, passive purple. Um, that seals it completely airtight so there's no leakage through these whatsoever so with this vcl being painted the whole building has been painted prior to us fitting 
these internal stud work walls because what you don't want to do, same with the floor, what you don't want to do is stop and start up to here, then you've got a whole panel basically behind you that hasn't got any there BCL. So it's important to do that before you put the internal stud work in. And then you can apply a flat ceiling if you want and not have to worry about the air tightness. If you look up here, it kind of makes sense. It's got an awkward ceiling up here. So rather than try and pass for an awkward ceiling, we've put a suspended sort of ceiling in here for a flat ceiling. So it doesn't matter about the air tightness above. It doesn't matter what you drill through here. So this whole entirety in here is completely airtight, the whole ceiling. Um, to, again, we've got a dormer, sorry, or more a, a, a roof window. Again, all around here is sealed. There's nothing here that hasn't been sealed. Uh, you've got to be careful with these. Obviously, all the cavity bats are sealed, the lintels are sealed. They are. You've got to make sure so that these are sealed down. Um, these are fixed and sealed properly. No, um, there's actually no screws in them as well. There's no screws in these whatsoever. These have been stuck down and fixed down, so there's no penetrations going through. So that helped that. What else can I find? Uh, sockets and everything else is surface mounted. Again, no punching through holes, chasing through walls, nothing like that, as you can see in here. Um, the junction between, obviously, the block work and the wood here, that's important, it is. So just attention to detail really. I think we achieved on here 0.66 air changes an hour for the first test. So we do have to achieve 0.6 air changes an hour to meet a passive sort of standard uh, for this house to be certified. So we've got a very small improvement to do. We've found a couple of issues around the steel works. So when this is plasterboard and a few areas that we've missed are sealed, this should probably achieve around about a 0.3, 0.4 air changes an hour. So overall, this is a super airtight property. So hopefully that gives you a bit of insight in how to get a brick and block house airtight for passive certification. Thanks for watching.